everybody, Gamer Penny here, bringing you another episode of our Final Fantasy XIV Online Let's Play. And we are back with Vesper, and today we're going to take on something pretty cool. So we're back out here, um, just out of Idleshire, and we're going to take on the next Alexander raid. So let's go ahead and pick up the quest here and see where it takes us. Uh, shock, Round Rocks thinks long and hard on what to do with Precious Glowstone. It is most favoritest treasure of Round Rocks, but Glowstone is also what Midi seeks all this time, and has already brought Round Rocks three whole years of joy. So Round Rocks decides to give it to Midi, so she can be happy too. For now, Round Rocks entrusts treasure to Uplander, to give to Midi at next meeting. Even meanest gobbies dare not try to take Glowstone from mighty Uplander. Okay, thank you. Roundrox does not know where Midi is now, but she often gazes out on Giant of Whirlycogs from Broken Water Watercross. Maybe Uplander finds her there. Alright, well let's head up there, I guess. Where? <laughs> where? Oh, over here. I was like, wait, where? <laughs> Alright, this way. From broken water thing it said oh up here Midi. from afar that mass of steel has a certain majesty does it not but something tells me you didn't come here to share the view what is it rondrox means to give me the codex fragment i i couldn't possibly accept she values that stone over the rest of her treasures combined. And yet, it may be safer in the hands of one more capable of defending it. Safer for all concerned. Gods know the Illuminati will stop at nothing to get it. Very well, if she feels I should have it, I will hold it for safekeeping for her. Alas, it is of no more use to me than any other rock. You doubtless recall the moment when Round Rocks first revealed the Codex Fragment to us, yes? When she took the stone in her hands, a piece of the Enigma Code burst forth unbidden in a brilliant flash of light. Yet it had been handled many times by others, yourself included, without ever betraying a hint of the secret contained within. Did you not find that strange? I myself was surprised, albeit for a different reason. The Codex is protected by an arcane mechanism, you see. Only those who share its fundamental principles are able to view its contents. It is rare indeed to find an individual with the qualities required to read it. That Round Rocks possesses such qualities is an unexpected blessing, to be sure. But if the Illuminati were to learn of her secret, she would be placed in grave danger. Even as we speak, they scour the hinterlands in search of their elusive missing piece. But as far as I know, they still view our friend as a mere collector of misplaced items. For her sake, we must do our utmost to draw their attention away from Big West shortstop, before they take it into their heads to return. And it is for that reason that I mean to leave this place. When the Illuminati learn that I have the fragment, it is my hope that they will focus their efforts on it, or on ascertaining it where my whereabouts. Needless to say, I may not return to Big West Shortstop for some time. While I'm gone, I would ask that you watch over Round Rocks. See that she does not come to harm? Sure thing. You have my thanks, adventurer. <laughs> All over a little stone. As I thought, I am no longer worthy. What? Shock, Wedge searches for Uplander with much urgency. Uplander must return to Big West Shortstop at once. Shock? Alright, bye. Okay. What's up, Wedge? 
We'll go see what he wants, and then hopefully that will take us into the next Alexander raid. And then I did happen to look up how far along we are. Oop, down here. How far along we are uh, in the Heavensward quest. We've got a whole nother, like, patch <laughs> to do. So we have a little bit left to do. So we don't have to do back-to-back -back raids, so... There you are, Vesper, and not a moment too soon. The Illuminati are getting ready for something big. Your Stola reports that Alexander has started drawing massive amounts of Aether from the surrounding land, which can only mean one thing. The Illuminati have resumed their attempts to revive it. And what's more, Bakrix reports that the goblins are amassing substantial quantities of explosives and supplies. By all indications, they're building another weapon. In short, it's bad. But it's nothing a bit of strategic thinking can't fix. They say he who strikes first strikes last, and that's exactly what I intend to do. I've devised a plan which should allow us to take the Illuminati unawares, and I'd like you to spearhead the assault. A rendezvous point is to the south, on the cliffs overlooking the Thaliac. Biggs has gone ahead to scout the area. We shall await your arrival there. What's this guy doing running around here? Driving me nuts. Get out of here. Alright. Let's go talk with Biggs. Bum, bum, bum. Here he is. Vesper, good to see you. I take it Wedge told you the situation. You ready to hit the Illuminati where it hurts? Sure. That's what I like to hear. The Chief will be here soon, and then we can get things underway. That glowing red eye, just like, <laughs> it's watching us, man. Hey, Yashola. Hey, Chief. <laughs> Bloody hells, if it ain't Yashola. No one told me you were coming. An etheric disturbance of this scale demands my personal attention. Judging by the marked fall in ambient aether concentrations, the situation is far graver than previously assumed. And you are certain that steel monstrosity is to blame? Like a beating heart there. I can see no other explanation. The giant's innards are well nigh saturated with aether already. Yet I sense something else. An irregular energy coming from within the barrier. Be that as it may, I'm afraid we have a more pressing concern. The Illuminati are up to something, and we mean to hit them before they can put whatever it is they're planning into action. <laughs> to which end, allow me to introduce my newest and perhaps most astounding invention. The Electro Jammer the Third, first of its kind. <laughs> Why is it the third then? Oh gosh. <laughs> Speechless with, with astonishment, I see, as well you should be. The high frequency waves emitted by this di device will interfere with any and all enemy communications, making it impossible for them to coordinate an effective defense. With it working in our favor, victory is all but assured. I see. So assuming I have understood you correctly, you need only activate this electro jammer of yours. And the Illuminati will be plunged into disarray, affording Vesper and her friends ample opportunity to take them unawares. Very well, proceed. Er, Wedge, is this supposed to happen? <laughs> Hells. 
Alexander didn't like that, man. Uh-oh, the second eye turned on. Raised its hand. Uh oh. Is it standing up? You've woken it up. Nay, only the left arm stirs. Could the waves emitted by your device have disturbed something within the barrier wedge? It it's not my fault. <laughs> He's laughing. Not to worry, Wedge, with the Illuminati hard at work reviving the giant, it was only a matter of time before parts of it started springing to life. You just gave this one a little extra nudge. On a brighter note, it would seem you've saved us the trouble of finding another way in. Vesper, old friend, it's time for your customary heroics. The Illuminati are likely still scrambling to work out what just happened. Before they do, I suggest you hop across the river and show them what for. I must needs discuss these developments with Master Matoya. Sid, would you be so good as to accompany me? Your insight might well prove useful. So can we go in now or little kitty? The shock, another core stirs to life. The future unfolds exactly as expected, exactly as written. Uh, speak with light kicks, eyes fixed. We're here. Light kicks, eyes fixed. For shock, I'll blend her feels shivery shakes. Arm of steel giant is wide open and no Illuminati in sight. The fist of the sun now accessible. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign up for the Fist of the Sun, and when we come back, we will head on inside. So sit tight for me, guys. All right, everybody, we are in the raid. I got to remember which one I just signed up for. I didn't sit there long, but I still forgot the name of it. Arm of the Fist of the Sun. Fist of the sun, you guys. We are in here, and hopefully I've got the music up loud enough they can hear it this time. All right, let's take this on. Oh, I forgot about this weird one. There we go. <laughs> Alright, let me just make sure. I know, I know, I gotta... 
Uh, there. Turn it up just a little bit. All right. It was fun watching in the comments. Oh gosh. Fun watching in the comments, um, everyone talk about their favorite music in the game. Uh, a lot of you were saying, yeah, Heaven's Ward had some really great music until Shadowbringers came out. And I agree, Shadowbringers had some really great music. Uh, just the music in general is really good in this game. And I think I saw something that the composer who did the music for Final Fantasy XIV is doing it for um, Final Fantasy 16, which if that is true, would be amazing. Uh oh, cutscene. We it's like riding a roller coat. Oh man, I wanna go to Cedar Point. <laughs> Hello. Alright, let's get in here. We surfing it on the way up. Alright. Whoops. Oh gosh, yeah, get that bomb out of there, you monkey. So one of the players turned into a monkey to get the bombs away from us. Ouch. at you I can't cast nothing that music bum, 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 bum. I'm jamming out in my chair I don't know <laughs> I don't, I'm not even paying attention to the fight I'm just having fun with my with the music going on oh crap ow oh god I'm dead <laughs> That's okay. I'm in it for the music anyway.
was over too soon. I wanted the music to keep going. All right. Let's get out of here and uh, see what the next raid is. All right, Biggs. Well done, lass. You left those Illuminati smartin' and without so much as a scratch to show for it. Well, I was kind of dead when the fight was over. Now, I'm sure you'd like to finish them off, and we would too, if truth be told, I but I'm sorry to say we have a problem. While Wedge and I were out on patrol, we saw something, you see. A meeting between Mitty and the enemy. What? She's a bad guy? And then she handed the Codex Framen over, just like that. The way she sauntered back into Alexander with the Illuminati, you'd think that was their plan all along. It certainly looks that way, aye, but we can't rule out the possibility of coercion, considering the parties involved. Uh-oh. Peshock, foolish Uplanders! Treasure Hunty was happy to give Codex, and why not? She makes busy deals with Illuminati since very beginning. And now Illuminati hold all fragments of the Enigma Codex. Treasure Hunter betrays Uplander's trust and forfeits their future in so doing. What a load of old bollocks! How daft does he think we are? Now, now, Biggs, if the Grand Master of the Illuminati said it, it must be true. <laughs> Shock, everything is as written, as it must be. If Illumina Illuminati are to guide Chosen to perfect world, not one piece can be out of place. With this, another page becomes reality. When Illuminati finds missing piece, the prophecy will be fulfilled. Alright. We'll see about that. Goodness me, that goblin hasn't the faintest idea how Uplander's minds work. I would have been prepared to believe that Mitty was a traitor had he not bothered to come here and confirm it. Now I'm inclined to think she isn't. <laughs> A shock. There may be truth to what Quick Think says. Bakra scours over data looking for knowings of what happened three years ago. Bakrix finds mention of a group of Ori treasure hunters. Three years ago, group went to investigate ruins near Thaliac River, only to perish in sudden shivery shakes. Three years ago, you say? That wouldn't be the earthquake that accompanied the failed summoning of that primal, would it? Bugger me, are you saying it was the treasure hunters doing the summoning, and that Mitty was one of them? Now hold on a moment. I'm willing to accept that Mitty may have been a member of this doomed expedition, she being an Ori treasure hunter and all, but I failed to see what interest such a group would have in the ideals of the Enigma Codex, let alone summoning a primal. For shock, such was questioned Bakrix asked himself, so he spends much time gathering knowings and finds answer to book answer in book lent to him by Charlie and Uplander. Genius technologist who writes Enigma Codex 100 years ago is Ori Zalia with blue hair, exactly like Mitty. Shock, no, Mitty would never make busy deals with bad gobbies. Round Rock searches for Mitty. Here's truth from her. Round Rocks, wait! Uh oh. Bow, 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 bow. All right, Biggs. If you're worried about Round Rocks, don't be. Wedge won't let her come to any harm. Truth be told, I'm more worried about this business with Mitty. Still, we should be careful of making any rash decisions, as you can bet that's what the Illuminati want. For now, I reckon we should give her the benefit of the doubt. Innocent till proven guilty, and all that. And anyway, we've got more pressing matters to deal with. Namely, taking back the Codex Fragment and pushing on into Alexander before the Illuminati have a chance to shore up their defenses. Are you ready for another round? Good. The sooner you get going, the better, I reckon. Oh, and when you're in the belly of the beast, be sure and break something for me, eh? Alright, Cuff of the Sun, coming up. So sit tight for me, guys, and I will be right back. 
Hello, everybody. It got me in the middle of eating pretzels. <laughs> but we are back. Oh, yeah. With my jam. The cuff of the sun. Do a little... Little hello. Get these guys down. flashiness on the screen. Alright, we jump into this vent. Get swept away down the pipes. Let's see what we got. Yikes, man. What the heck? Some Power Ranger bullshit going on with it. Oh, they waited for us. All right, let's do a quick one of these. Like, what? <laughs> What's happening here? Yikes. Something's happened. <laughs> I got paralyzed on myself. I don't like that, man. Just, I jam out when we're in here. I can't help it. The music is so good. Should we be on the raised ones or no? <laughs> no one else is standing on the raised ones. What should I do? I don't know what to do. They're standing on the raised ones. Ow. Him down. 
I don't know what the raising of the squares was for that one. All right, and one more. I should probably- ow! Gosh, I should probably stand, like, towards the edge then. Oh gosh. Alright. Let's get serious here. Ow! <laughs> Well, now, now let's get serious here. Oh god. Did we all die? <laughs> It looked like everyone died at the end. Was that not what happened? <laughs> yeah, wait, what, what the heck? We all died. <laughs> oh, well. That was funny. <laughs> Alright. Uh, nothing we want. Ah, I didn't want to pick those up. Oh, well. So that was Cuff of the Sun. That was funny. Something got off at the end there that hit everyone. <laughs> but oh well. I was gonna say we finally finished one where we weren't dead at the end, but that wasn't even true that case. Uh, ah, Vesper, you haven't seen Round Rocks, have you? I was looking forward to hearing about the new treasures she's found. What? No. Midi, uh, I see. Well, I will not lie to you. Some of it is true. I did meet with the Illuminati, but that is not the whole story. Allow me to explain. You're saying you handed over the Codex Fragment to stop the Illuminati from coming here and taking it? Yes, but the Fragment I handed over to them was not but a stone picked from a pile of rubble. The true Codex Fragment is here, safe and sound. I bloody knew Quick Thinks was lying. The way he told it, you'd been working with the Illuminati all along. Load of old bilge, the lot of it. I am afraid not. Quick Thinks told you true. In fact, it was I who first taught the goblins how to summon the primal. I meant only to use them for my own ends, of course, much as I did you. What? The author of the Enigma Codex was an ancestor of mine. The creation of the so-called perfect worlds proposed within it has long been the goal of certain members of our tribe, myself included. For years, we strove in secret to realize its high ideals, free of the twisted elitism, elitism that, which seems to have infected the Illuminati. During that time, there was one who served as our leader, a man who made us believe that our perfect world was within reach. A man with whom I fell in love. I wished for nothing more than to see his dreams come to fruition. Aww. So blind was my devotion, I agreed to help him summon a primal without a second thought. The danger to our lives never even crossed my mind. But on that day, three years ago, I came to know the folly of our mission.
In an instant, the infernal machine laid waste to our hopes, snuffing out the lives of my companions, and the man I loved was dragged into its core. In a last desperate attempt to make right our mistake, I called forth a barrier with which to seal Alexander. At that moment, however, the codex shattered, and the colossus vanished without a trace. When the dust settled, I found myself surrounded by the broken fragments of the codex, the cold, accusing remnants of our dream of a perfect world. We were fools to think only of the future. I did not realize it until my friends were gone, but the time we spent on our journey together, pursuing a shared dream, those moments were as precious as any paradise we could have hoped to build. It's a sad old tale, I'll give you that, but it doesn't explain why you had the Illuminati summon the Primal, or why you had us help you infiltrate it. After other, everything you've been through, you can't seriously think any good will come of reviving Alexander. But all you all but said as much yourself. Good has nothing to do with it. Understand, I did not act out of any lingering adherence to my old ideals. I simply wanted to see him again. And perhaps, walk to the ends of the world with him. Him? A shock. Mitty cannot mean Alexander. <clears throat> Not Ag Alexander itself but the soul, I believe, still resides within. Soul of Uplander sleeps in giant machine. Never has Backrix heard such unsense. Mitty must abandon this. <laughs> Now's not the time. I've got one more question to ask you. What happens when all the Codex fragments are brought together? Alexander was born from hearts that yearned for a perfect world. The writings of the Enigma Codex inspired such a desire, but they are more than just a collection of texts. The Codex can also be used to control the primal. To be precise, two elements are required. A complete Enigma Codex and one capable of reading it. When both are present, Alexander can be commanded to transport its residents wherever they choose. I myself was once able to read the Codex, but those days are long gone. Now, the fragments are as dead to me as the stones beneath my feet. There is another, however, to whom the Codex still responds, one we all know quite well. What? Round rocks? Are you saying that little girl is the key to controlling a bleeding primal? Uh oh. Ruh! Round! Round rocks! Round rocks has been captured! Oh no! All right. Um, Toplin the Tyrant. Curse me for a fool. I should have known better than to underestimate the Illuminati. I assumed the missing piece in their plan was the Codex Fragment. 
but they were talking about round rocks all along. We must mount a rescue now, without delay. To the Illuminati, she's better than a co she's no better than a cog in that monstrous machine. It is like that she's being held somewhere in or close to Alexander's upper body. Continue your push through the left arm, and while the Illuminati are distracted, I will search for a way forward. All right. Okay, we're gonna take on the arm of the sun, so I will be right back. All right, everybody, we are back. It was a very quick turnaround for that one, so I didn't even get a chance to eat my pretzels this time. <laughs> arm of the sun. Search for round rocks. Oh, well, she has a cool outfit. I want to look at her outfit. Where is she? And right there. Look at her out. Get out of here, you cat. Her outfit looks awesome. I wonder where you get that from. All right, I guess we're going in here. Hey, let me in. What do I do? Where do I go? Exhaust duck. Everyone, everyone took the exhaust ducks from me. Here I go. Uh, all right, here we are. Okay, I'm glad I helped with that. <laughs> Go here. Whee! This is kind of oh, this is awesome. What the hell, man? <laughs> uh, okay. We'll try to help out here. Alrighty. Meow. Hello, kitty. <laughs> this looks sick in here. Uh oh. Welcome to the public execution, Uplanders. Uh huh. Uh, yes, please. Move me there. All right. Oh God. I feel like we should not stand on those. Okay. Um, my ley lines. Oh, someone's in, uh, <laughs> Chula's in prison over there, man. That's kind of a cool mechanic. Oh god. Jeez. <laughs> Glad we weren't, uh, standing in the middle of that.
remember this fight even a little bit. All right. Let's open up, man. Ow. Stop all that. Which way are you facing? Done. I can't move. I grabbed the other guy. <laughs> gotta get the. Oh, grab two people, man. Gotta get the pad. Can we get padlocks out there? Or? Do it for that one, I guess. Ow. Good job. All right. All right. Finally, we didn't die in one. <laughs> Bum -ba -dum. She looks sweet in that outfit. That's a cool healer's outfit. Alright. Please, I don't want anything in there. Yes. Alright, cool. That was the arm of the sun, and I think we have one more to do after this, so a little bit longer episode. Uh, Shock, Uplander sends quick think scurrying. Illuminati think twice before threatening us again. Uplander is nearly three left arm. Next Uplander must push forward into inner parts and save round rocks. Congratulations on your victory over Quick Thinks. While you were busy dismantling his flying machine, I finished charting Alexander's interior. The chamber you reached is situated in the innermost part of the left sector, which means your next aim should be... Shock! Backrix does not trust Treasure Hunter. Three years ago she summoned Metal Giant. Backrix wonders if she still wishes to finish Mission of Dead Comrades. Uh-oh. I do not blame you for doubting me. Truth be told, my former mentors often stressed that there were the unthinkable to happen. It would be my burden, as the youngest, to carry on their work. But building the Codex's perfect world was their dream, not mine. I only borrowed it. As long as I was with those I held dear, I could happily have devoted myself to any cause. Seeing their passion, their joy, that was what filled me with resolve, and it was that which drove me to collect the pieces of the Codex. All with their talk of learning and reason, of justice and perfection, meant little to me in itself. I sometimes wonder why I was able to read the Enigma Codex in the first place. Mayhap it was because my youthful mind was as a blank slate, receptive to any ideal, if put convincingly enough. In the end, of course, it didn't matter. The primal took my friends' passion, their joy, and their idealism and ground them into dust. Though I survived, my commitment to the cause did not. Put simply, I had no need for a perfect world without them to share it. So believe me when I tell you that I did not seek Alexander's return to realize the dreams of the dead. I only wish to see him again. Meaning your leader. The 
section of Alexander you have been exploring is called Midas, after a king from a legend of Eld. Midas entreated the gods for a finger that would turn all he touched into gold, and the gods duly obliged. But in his carelessness, he tr transformed the one he loved most in the world into a lifeless golden statue, and thus the thing he coveted became his undoing. So it was with me and mine. Had we but paused for a moment to consider the means and not simply the end, mayhap my friends would still be alive. But we did not, and they are gone. My one remaining wish is simple, to speak with the man I love once more. If I could do that, I would be satisfied. There, I have told you everything. Assuming no one else wishes to question my motives, I would speak of Round Rocks' rescue, as was my original intent. Now listen well. <laughs> Alexander is divided into three main sections, each powered by an independent core. You have already fought your way through the innermost part of Midas, the left arm. The core lies only a little way beyond, but you may be sure that the Illuminati will have deployed the bulk of their forces to defend it. Hold on a minute. Why would they choose to keep Round Rocks there? The cores are just power sources. You are correct, and the answer is, they wouldn't. Round Rocks is most likely being held with Alexander's upper body, but the Illuminati have locked the entrances from either arm, making it impossible to enter. Our only choice is to stop the core, and in doing so, stop Alexander. I see. Why, that's actually rather clever. The Illuminati need Round Rocks to control the Primal, but if he can't move, they'd have no need for her. At the very least, they'll have no choice but to keep her safe until the Primal is in working order again. Activating those cores would have used up every crystal the Illuminati had. If we destroyed the second one, I doubt they'll have enough to get them operational again. Pashok, do Uplanders truly think Metal Giant can be toppled? All right, well, let's get in there and topple the giant. Shock, Treasure Hunter truly believes soul of lost love sleeps in Metal Giant. Madness, but Backrix does not doubt, doubt resolve to rescue Round Rocks. Go with Mitty deep into Midas and deactivate second core, but do not under, underestimate Illuminati. Day and night, they bring supplies into Steel Fortress. Backrix, Backrix suspects Illuminati are tinker making new weapons. All right, so we will head into, what is it? The Burden of the Sun. So guys, I will be right back and we will head into the Burden of the Sun. Sit tight for me. All right, everybody, we are back. And again, this one was almost an insta-pop for our queue. So we're gonna take on the last raid of Alexander Midas, Burden of the Sun. Here we are, here's our group, looking snazzy. Ooh. That guy looks pretty cool, actually. <laughs> we do have two of everything. Don't burninate me. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Power of twos. <laughs> Gosh, I'm glad we were not standing right next to that guy. <laughs> ah. 
Oh god, that one got me. <laughs> okay, we'll do this here. happening on the screen here. <laughs> Good golly, Miss Molly, let me tell you. Okay. Troning it up. Listen, you Power Rangers. They are Voltron, man. What the heck? <laughs> I am jamming the heck out, man. <laughs> Back on this guy. Stop that. Was almost dead, man. Ow. We're transforming again? Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is insane. Like sins of the sun, we did it. Take that, Voltron. <laughs> That's straight up Power Rangers, man. <laughs> that turn around as it explodes. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Might is complete. It was player come to the other black mage. 
and we don't want any of those, so bye! The Maiden Knot? <laughs> this is the second power core that... The second core, I do believe. Once that's out of commission, Alexander won't be going anywhere. Diane, would that I could see you just once more. Do it, girl. Farewell, my love. Aww. Frightened to face us alone, I see. Not that I blame you. We all know what Vesper did to you last time. The shock. To usher in future, there has been writ. Even stronger, strongest gobby must sometimes pretend to be weak and let enemies win. <laughs> oh, pretending were you. And I suppose losing this core was all part of your plan. Don't make me laugh. You know as much about the future as we do. Quick thinks knows all. For example, Quick thinks knows one among Uplanders carries true fragment of Enigma Codex. It seems the game is up, Biggs. There's no hiding the truth from Quick thinks. Very well, I admit it. I have the fragment, but I won't be handing it over to the likes of you. <laughs> wedge. Oh, I Wedge. Didn't you hear him? He knows all. Which means he knows that what you're carrying is a worthless rock. While well, I've got the genuine article tucked away in me small clothes. Uh-oh. Bye, guys. Quick thinks already knows conclusion of Uplander's childish games. He's coming for me. Eh? What's he waiting for? Wanna go was one... Long ago was outcome decided. Uplanders think they are victorious, but luck is no friend to them today. Hmm. Uh-oh. <gasps> the rock! What? <laughs> Angry kitty. And now, Enigma Codex belongs to Illuminati. All pieces fall into our hands. How do you do that? Rup row. Hmm. As far as I can make out, the thing's in good working order. No damage, no signs of tampering. 
I can only think it was an energy fluctuation that did it. Just bad luck. Bad luck? You're saying it was pure chance that the platform stopped at that exact moment. Then what about quick things? There is no way he could have predicted something like that. The odds would be infin infinite... <laughs> infinitesimal. <laughs> Well, however he did it, the fact remains that he did. But but that doesn't mean we have to stand for it. When someone takes something from you, you just have to take it back. Alright. Well, let's go talk to Bakrix then. Yes, please. Chuck, do all planters forget something? Matters are too urgent for such foolish doings. What? Ton flaps of Uplander make Backrix almost a laugh. Uplander claims already to have stopped core and lost fragment to quick things. Look here, Uplander. Backrix has brain case like steel trap, catching all heard things, all seen things. And he saw Uplanders leave but few moments ago. Backrix senses something is amiss. Uh oh. Alright. So something was amiss there, that someone who's uh, maybe dressed like us came back. But that is going to be where we end this episode, uh, and we'll take on the other raid after a few more episodes of the main story. We also have the alliance raids that we want to unlock, um, but for now, I think we're good on raids. So that was Alexander Midas. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you do want to watch more of the Final Fantasy XIV online Let's Play, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Alright, bye bye everyone.